Hello, CJHS students. This is Mr. Rock with another video. Another video about the Pythagorean theorem. This time, though, our focus is on applying the Pythagorean theorem. We know the Pythagorean theorem can only be used with right triangles. We know the parts of a right triangle, the legs and the hypotenuse. We know the equation, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We know that sometimes we have to solve for a leg, other times we have to solve for a hypotenuse. But why are we learning all of, all of this? How is it even useful? Well, hopefully in these application problems, you can see the usefulness of the Pythagorean theorem. Here we go. Okay, here's our first example. This example is about Chris. Chris rode his bike four miles west and then three miles south. What is the shortest distance he can ride back to the point where he started? Well, in order to do this problem, we have to know our directions. Up is north, down is south, to the right is east, and to the left is west. So here's Chris. Chris is going to ride his bike. He's going to ride his bike four miles west. And I'm going to draw a line to represent four miles west. And then he's going to ride his bike three miles south. So he just rode his bike three miles south, and here's a line that represents Chris riding his bike three miles south. And the question is, what is the shortest distance he can ride back to the point where he started? So Chris wants to go back to where he started, and the shortest distance he can go is this diagonal right here. And, as you can tell, drawing a picture really helps w with understanding these problems, and I recommend that you draw a picture. Anyway, to get to the point where Chris started, we can use the Pythagorean theorem. This is a leg right here. This is a leg right here. And the distance that we are trying to calculate is C, the hypotenuse. So I can write down the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 3 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. 9 plus 16 e equals c squared. Oops. 9 plus 16 is 25, so 25 equals c squared. Take the square root of each side, and we get c is equal to 5. So that's the distance that Chris needs to ride along this blue line, the hypotenuse, to get back to the place where he started. Okay, here's our next problem says, determine the area of a circle below. Hint, the hypotenuse of the triangle is the diameter of the circle, and pi equals 3.1415. All right, well, let's take a look at this. They want us to find the area of this circle. That means we are trying to calculate how much space is inside the circle. And in order to calculate the area, we need to know this formula right here. Area is equal to pi r squared. They also tell us in the problem that this right here, this is the diameter. And they also tell us that this diameter right here is the same as the hypotenuse of this right triangle. So that's important to know. And something else that's important to know is that when I take when I finally figure out the length of this hypotenuse, 
this diameter and I divide that answer by 2, I will have the length of the radius, which is what I need to figure out the area of this circle. All right, so let's calculate the length of the hypotenuse. I'm going to use the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 5 squared plus 9 squared equals C squared. 25 plus 81 equals C squared. 106 equals C squared. Take the square root of each side and we get C equals C equals approximately 10.3. Okay, so that's the length of the hypotenuse, but remember the hypotenuse is the same as the diameter. And if I so that means I can say that the diameter is equal to 10.3. If I take the diameter and divide it by 2, I get the radius. So the radius is equal to 5.15. So the radius is equal to 5.15. So I finally have this. I have the radius, 5.15. And now I can calculate the area of the circle. Area equals pi r squared. So area equals 3.14 times 5.15 squared. So area of this circle is equal to approximately 83.3 units squared. All right, here's another problem. A rectangular book measures 8 by 10. What is the length? of its diagonal. Well, here's the book. It's Harry Potter and the Deathly Hollows. I've read this book series so many times. I read the book series out loud to each of my three kids. It took me about a year to read the books out loud. It's my, one of my favorite series, so I did not mind doing it at all. Anyway, the question is, how long is this diagonal? All right, well, let's do some drawing. It says I have 8 by 10 books, so this much is 8. This much is 10. And here is the diagonal. This is a right triangle. The length of the diagonal can be solved by using the Pythagorean theorem. So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. 8 squared plus 10 squared equals c squared. 64 plus 100 equals c squared. c squared equals 164. Take the square root of each side. And I get c is equal to the square root of 164. That means C is equal to approximately 12.8 units. So that's the length of the diagonal. I was able to figure it out by using the Pythagorean theorem. Way to go, Pythagorean theorem. Thank you.
Okay, look at this situation here. It looks like I have a building. And the building is 12 units high. And it looks like there's a ladder that's leaning against the building. And we're trying to figure out how long the ladder is. And it looks like the base of the ladder is five units away from the building. Well, this is a job for the Pythagorean theorem. Here is my right triangle. This much right here is equal to 12. All right. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals C squared. 25 plus 144 equals C squared. 169 equals C squared. Take the square root of both sides. And I get C equals plus or minus 13. But I want to go with the positive 13. Because it's distance. I'm measuring, I'm measuring the ladder. So X here is 13. The ladder is 13 units long. Okay, so in this video, you saw some applications of the Pythagorean Theorem. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you find it helpful. Good luck with your assignment. Bye.